there's a very long history here that has to do with Metatronics, and it has to do with a being called Metatron, and it has to do with the Anu Elohim. When we get into Metatronics, Metatron, who is Metatron? Where did that word come from? <laughs> Metatron is the name of a family collective. It's a family collective out of an entity. Now, an entity is something above a rishi, the first level of ascended masters, consciousness collective. There's an entity called Giovanni. Giovanni was an entity in good standing, as most entities are. Giovanni was part of the collective that created the Christos founders races that seeded this time matrix 950 billion years ago. It was the groups of Elohim that were commissioned to Stargate 11, which was Avion in Lyra. They were commissioned as the guardians, the Christos founders guardians of Stargate 11 that became convoluted, code convoluted, which began their downfall, both genetically, template-wise, and of consciousness. That particular group were out of the entity called Giovanni. Because of the fall that took place, the genetic fall and the creation of the black hole that I'll talk about in a minute, it was created 250 billion years ago, the entity Giovanni fell. Because there's a law of physics that applies. If you are an ascended master being, you have your pieces up there, your parts of self stationed out of the time matrix. You send in X amount of energy of yourself into the matrix if you sent in, and most don't, but on occasion, as an ascended master collective will send in more than a natural proportion of its energy into the matrix, say for a salvage mission. If the salvage team you sent in goes down too, it takes the whole collective down. So there was an entity that fell as a result of what took place 250 billion years ago. 250 billion years ago, an event took place in the Lyra star system, the cradle of Lyra, with the Christos founders races, the races from Stargate 11, the guardians of Avion Gate 11, and the guardians of Gate 10, which is Vega Lyra, began to war with each other because both of them suffered code convolution. The Omicron Dracon Draconian races, who were of the Seraphi Seraphim, were the Gate 10 Guardians and a particular group out of the Geo Giovanni entity of Elohim were the Guardians of Gate 11. Both of them were getting a bit out of hand as far as taking a free will concept and literally turning it in on itself and becoming authoritarian because free will and authoritarian dictatorship do not go hand in hand. They are in direct opposition. Both of them began to play that game with each other. And after a while of the um, D11 Elohim pushing the Draconians around, the Draconians managed to evolve in a certain way that they were a bit stronger. So they began to take back territory. They began to push back. And at this point, the Elohim commissioned High Council, which were the ones who were guardians, the Elohim, the Elahi Elohim, who were guardians of Gate 12, and they said, these guys are out of control. We want you to destroy them. And we said, excuse me, we don't destroy anybody. By the way, did you notice that you've been out of control for a while, too? <laughs> Why don't we all sit down and figure out how we can help both of you heal? They didn't like that answer. They threatened High Council that if you don't destroy them, we'll destroy them. And not only that, we will destroy your gate and you as well, and we will take over the Matrix. That was a very sick decision to make. It was a choice that was made because they had an idea these were creator god people. These were Elohim that knew just almost as much as the other Elohim. They knew that if Source could create using the um, template that we talked about yesterday in the Dance Floor programs, where you have 15 spheres, well, what if you took just seven? They knew there was a way to bend the mathematics, which would bend the light and the sound 
and the scalar waves into a form that could actually repel itself and cut itself off from the natural matrix. It would still exist within the entire matrix, but it would be their own system. They decided they wanted to turn this time matrix into that, which was a direct violation of something called the Emerald Covenant. The Emerald Covenant was the original agreement that the Yanis Ascended Masters agreed upon when they decided to create this time matrix together. It was a free will system, and it was built upon the Law of One, which is acknowledgement that we are all of the same source and that love and co-creation is the only sane and natural way of being in, uh, in an understanding of yourself as part of the One. That was the original tenets and precepts by which this matrix was created. The Elohim of Gate 11 decided that they were going to do it different. They were going to break that covenant and they were going to destroy the races who wouldn't cooperate with them and they were going to take it over and run it their way. The only thing standing in their way of doing that were the Elohai Elohim of Gate 12. They could dominate the things lower in coding than them. They could when push came to shove, used their ability to run higher frequency because they had the D11 coding. The Seraphi Seraphim had D10 coding. So they could, if they wanted to, use that superiority and ability, and ability to run frequency to get rid of the Draconian races. But they would have a hard time doing it to get rid of the Elohi Elohim races because they had D12 and higher capacity. But there is a way to turn the natural physics of creation in on itself. If you can think of the Cathara grid and the Stargate systems as a conduit of energy, and when energy is coming into the matrix, it spirals down through the primal light and sound fields into D12 and then D11, 10, 9, 8. Now, if you block energy at gate 11, the energy is still coming in through 12, but it bounces back and it creates a backflow that amplifies. So you can, and it was theoretic at that point, theoretical, theoretically, you could sever the connection at gate 12 and have gate 11 and down be your own little universe if you wanted to hijack it. That was their idea. It worked. <laughs> and there was a choice that the Elohai made. There was a choice to defend or to allow. Now the Elohai knew that they were eternal. Death isn't something that frightened them. They were completely beyond that. They knew that if they were to defend themselves because they had superior power capacity, that those who attempted to destroy them would literally have the energy bounce back at themselves and literally wipe them out and the systems they were connected to. It would not only take out the Elohim that were posing the challenge. It would take out the Seraphi Seraphim, both the fallen ones, and a group called the Adetokron. The Adetokron were a race of Seraphi Seraphim who had co-governance over Stargate 10, Vega, with the Omicron Draconians. The Adetokrons were the Reptilians. There was a difference between the Draconians and the Reptilians. The Draconians were the Dragon Moth people. They were the dinoids. They created dinosaur-like, as opposed to snake-like, as opposed to smaller reptilian. The Omicron dragon moth dinoids were fully involved in the competition for the time matrix. They knew what the Elohim were going to do, and they decided they would do it too. They didn't petition for help. They said, fine, we'll both get rid of them, and then we'll go after each other and see who gets the matrix. But the Odetokron, the reptilians, didn't want to play the game. They were stuck in the Gate 10 system, and they petitioned for help. But because you had Gate 11 and the Elohim in the middle, in between Gate 12 and Gate 10, we weren't able to rescue or get the Odetokron out. So if the decision to defend by simply putting up a shield around gate 12 was chosen. It would have taken out both gate 11 and gate 10, which could have been repaired. It would have taken a long time, but it could have been repaired using gate 12. But those consciousness that were, were in those systems would be fragmented back to space dust. They'd still be part of God, as I've said. You can never be not part of God. 
but races that had beautiful potential and they'd already come a long way in their evolution. They'd evolved from 950 billion years ago to 250 billion years ago. That's a lot of evolution. And they had reached wondrous things in their own right in certain ways. It was primarily because of the Odetokron, of the reptilians, that the founders chose to allow, knowing they were taking a burden onto themselves. But it was the only way that if they allowed it, they would slowly be able to heal it. They knew a black hole would be created if this were allowed. They tried to talk them out of it, but they didn't want to listen. The Elohim did not want to listen. Instead of defending themselves, they allowed the Elohim to back up gate 11 and reverse it. And that created a backflow, and it literally shattered the divine blueprint and blew up the stargates in Lyra Aramatena. That would have to be reassembled later using the D13 and higher primal light fields to reset the pattern. It created a black hole system. That black hole system came to be known as Phantom Matrix. Phantom Matrix was originally a part of this time matrix. Phantom Matrix started with simply part of the D11 Avion gate and what was that planetary system or star system and the D10 Vega Lyra system. But it grew much bigger than was ever intended. When the Phantom Matrix was created by the Anu Elohim, they came to call themselves the Anu Elohim. The Giovanni entity hadn't fully fallen. A portion of that entity had fallen. And because of that, it sent another portion of itself into the matrix to try to rescue the part of itself that had fallen. That was a risky thing to do because, again, it comes down to how much energy is on which side. Normally, an entity would put X amount of itself into the matrix at one time. Well, it already lost a big chunk of itself, so it put more of itself in, and there was a chance that was taken. If that part ended up getting distorted also and couldn't, wasn't strong enough to pull the others back out, it would make more critical mass of reversed mess in the matrix than what the uh, collective had itself, the, uh, the uh, Ascendant Master Collective had itself. And that is what happened, but it happened in stages. When the original fall happened, the original sin, when Stargate 11 blew up you know, 20, 250 billion years ago and Phantom Matrix was created, there were precautionary things put in, in motion, knowing that it was going to occur. There was something called the Eye of Brahman that was created at D12.5. Now, that was a little bit beyond the D12 um, stargate. It, the Eye of Brahman was a polarization refraction lens that would allow the primal light fields from the natural to this time matrix to refract through and literally anchor into the phantom matrix to hold it, to give it a structure so it could begin to restructure itself instead of going completely back to space dust. Because what happens when a black hole is created? A template is shattered like um, a crystal that's crushed with a hammer. It gets twisted, the energy gets twisted and reversed, but if it has any portion of its template that has enough frequency, it can begin to accrete again. What usually happens in a black hole system is it accretes like-to-like -like frequency, but it's missing pieces, and it isn't able to accrete functionally. So it, it, it accretes on a, a distorted template compared to its original mathematics. The Eye of Brahman was intended to allow the pattern of the natural template of this time matrix to be put back in to phantom matrix. So when it began to re-accrete itself and the consciousness began to pull itself together, it would still have, eventually, after it accreted enough, it would have access to getting plugged back in to its original divine blueprint. That was the original intention. So there was a lens, the first eye, the eye of Brahman, created. And it was created by the, the Christos founders and the Yanis Ascended Masters races in order to give the beings that would be caught in the black hole system an opportunity to re-evolve instead of being, you know, blown back to space dust. And again, it was done primarily because you had several innocent races, but primarily the Odetokron, who 
had been persecuted by the draconian races progressively more and more. There was no way they could get out of the system. And they had always been in good standing with, with the Christos founders' races. So there was a commitment made on behalf of them, but also on behalf of the others. Because even though the Anu Elohim had gone off on their own tangent and become very dangerous creator gods, they had become anti-creator gods, anti-Christic creator gods, they were still loved. And there was still the, if there's life, there's hope, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> you know? So it was a decision of love. But it was a decision of accepting, out of love, accepting a huge, massive responsibility. The responsibility of knowing how dangerous this healing experiment could be. Because if it went wrong, if it went bad, it could not only take down this whole matrix, but if it did, that would allow it to have enough frequency where it could begin to poke holes into other time matrices as well. It wasn't a decision that was made by a couple of people. It was a decision that was made through the Ascended Masters Giannis Councils of various different time matrices that could be directly affected if it went wrong and if it went bad. There was a whole lot of them that didn't want it tried. But there was enough, and it came down to a vote. And it came down to a, some of the older time matrices that were much older than 950 billion years old, <laughs> had been through something similar to this long time before and didn't work. I said, okay, you guys have a good idea, sweet children. <laughs> you really, really, really want to try it. Now, you, you know, you've looked at what could happen. The outcome, if it's successful, we will look up to you because we tried a similar thing when a similar thing happened in our matrices. But it didn't work and it created absolute havoc. We would, like to, we would have liked for it to work. So, because we would like to know where we went wrong, maybe you can do it better. And if you're willing to take responsibility, that means you don't get out of there. If it goes bad, you stay in there until you fix it, right? So it doesn't hurt anything else. So the Creator Gods, the Anu Elohim and the Seraphai Seraphim and the Braharama races that were the original three Christos founders races of this matrix and their Yanis Ascendant Masters Collective said, yeah, we want to try. So the permission was given for us to try and that's why the Eye of Brahman was allowed to be set up. So the phantom matrix wouldn't just go back into implosion within itself because when a system goes into black hole and it begins to accrete. It will accrete to a certain point where it begins to literally pull energy from itself because it pulls all its pieces together and it has nothing left to do but com continue to pull. And it pulls itself into compaction and it goes into what's called molecular compaction or atomic compaction and it implodes on itself. It has to do with magnetic and electrical fields. So, by setting up the Eye of Brahman, there was an opportunity being made where the black hole would accrete, but at a certain point in its accretion, it would reach enough frequency in reverse that it could possibly be plugged in to the D13 primal light fields so it could be brought back around. It was a long shot, but it was worth a try, at least so we thought at the time. <laughs> well, when this occurred, one of the big heroes in the drama was going to be Giovanni. Giovanni wanted to make sure, because Giovanni felt responsible, because it was Giovanni's family that had created the fallen Anu Elohim. There was a particular collective of the Giovanni family, like a smaller family within a family, that was called Metatron. Metatron, at a certain point, became directly involved. Now the Eye of Brahma was set up 250 billion years ago in preparation for. It was actually set up before they did the final blowing up of Stargate 12. That's when the decision to allow was given. Once the Stargate blew up, the Eye of Brahman activated and it began to, to hold the Phantom Matrix from to, you know, totally going into reversal where it dropped so low in frequency that you couldn't plug into it anymore. And there was a degree of successful evolution between, between 250 billion years ago and 150 billion years ago. 
we got a lot of the Odetic Crown races out, and even some of the fallen Anu Elohim and fallen Draconian races were able to do bioregenesis and get back out into the natural matrix. There was a problem that was manifesting itself in relation to some of the Anu Elohim that were being rehabilitated, the ones that had been out of the Metatron um, Giovanni collective. You could get them out to about D11, and then they were what's called host matrix, because they didn't have the D12 frequency anymore. They were hosted into, into um, another collective of the Braharama races. So you ended up with a hybrid because the Braharama races had the lowest frequency of the Christos founders races. So the Anu Elohim had the second highest before they couldn't plug into their own matrix, so they were hosted through the Braharama races. But they still held a mentality, even after they would undergo hosting, of dictatorial type governance. Their distortions had gone so deep, and because they still didn't have a full D12 pattern back. At D12, you start to get something. You start to get it consciously. You start to feel it. We are all one. That means I am you and you are me. That means I treat you the way I would want to be treated. That means we cooperate and not fight. Without the full D12 pattern, that cognition cannot fully come in. So they still didn't have that cognition. They began to pose a danger. Too, even when they'd be hosted out, they're posing a danger to the Braharama races. So there was another decision made, and this is where Metatron came in full force. There was another lens put in, another polarization refraction lens. The original one stayed, the Braharama, or the Brahman, the Eye of Brahman stayed. That was to hold Phantom Matrix intact. This other lens that was called the Eye of Yahweh, or yod heh was put in. It was the Metatronic Eye. It was put in to allow a, what do you call it, shortcut. So the races, the fallen Anu Elohim races, because they were still posing a danger, where they could do a shortcut, they didn't have to make it all the way up to D12, they could do a shortcut into another matrix that was actually more authoritarian. It was not a matrix that was originally created on a free will system. It was a healing matrix, almost like how you look at our, you know, perhaps our, uh, our prisons for violent criminal type people. And they, it was agreed, the Metatron and the Giovanni entity agreed that their races needed rehabilitation, more, you know, more strict rehabilitation. They were still not capable of functioning fairly in a free will system. They would abuse if they were given power. And because of that, the Metatron collective created and were permitted to create the, um, the Eye of Metatron or the Eye of Yahweh. They're one and the same. This lens was supposed to, it was positioned at D11.5, which is between gate 11 and gate 12. All right, so it wasn't as high up in frequency as the Eye of Brahman. And it was a, it, they would be able to evolve and get, in, get that mathematical coding and then it would take them over into another matrix system. And it was actually another black hole system that had made some progress. It was the original one from way back that the other time matrices, the other Yanis Ascendant Masters had said, well, we tried and it didn't work. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. They were still trying to heal and rehab that one. And there were certain portions of it that were rehabbing. They were partially successful. So it was decided by the, by the Metatron entity and its Giovanni Collective and the Ascendant Masters Collectives that the ones that were causing problems they could, you know, for the Braharama races would be hosted out into this matrix where they could finish their evolution there. All right. This was originally supposed to be an, evolu an evolutionary shortcut because in certain terms, if they were successful there, it would take them less time to evolve back into full ascended mastery than if they stayed here to re fully regenerate the Christos template. There were certain perks for them to go. It was originally called the Path of Arimathea. It had to do with a, a planet or a star called Ar Aramatsus that was part of this matrix. Now, Aramatsus at the time that these decisions were made to allow the Eye of Metatron to be put in, Aramatsus was kind of like a, a crown jewel in that particular fallen matrix because it was beginning to get 
its D11.5 frequencies back, where it was this close to being able to go back into being reversed to a D12 natural pattern. So there was this chance taken by putting in the Metatronic Eye or the Eye of uh, Yali that would create a link between that system. It was supposed to be a one-way link. You could go this way, but they could not come this way. All right, that was to protect this matrix. And it didn't link into this matrix. It linked into phantom, and phantom linked into here. Well, large numbers of the fallen Anu Elohim did evolve out via the, uh, the Eye of Metatron or the Eye of uh, Yahweh. And then a problem happened over in Aramat. We call it Aramat for short. <laughs> in Aramat Zeus, the new influx of the still semi-distorted consciousness from this matrix got together with the distorted consciousness from other systems in that matrix and invited them up to Aramatsus. And together they took over Aramatsus. And this created a situation for the Giovanni Metatron family. They were losing all the, some of the, one, the guardian ones that they had sent in to assist had actually gone into the phantom matrix and escorted the others out into the other matrix. And when there were rebellions over in their system, it was called the Wiesedek system, when there was rebellion in the Wiesedek system, the guardian races sent by Metatron and sent by Giovanni were also overtaken, and their consciousness was entrapped. There are certain ways you can entrap a being in a body. And we'll get into this in a little bit. It has to do with um, creating an electrostatic body as opposed to an electrodynamic body. An electrodynamic body allows frequency to move freely through. An electrostatic body keeps it circulating, where it just circulates within itself and it blocks the currents. There were particular genetic experiments done and also planetary grid experiments and galactic grid experiments done in the Wiesedek matrix that created a situation where about 89 percent you know, of the energy of Giovanni Metatron was literally put into reversal. And when, ha when that happens, it creates like a black hole pulling on the Ascendant Master Collective itself. And there was a choice made by that matrix to either sever its connection completely to those of itself that it had lost. What this meant was it was going to fall. One way or another, it was going to fall. Because if you can't hold enough frequency to stay in resonance with the primal light and sound fields, with the, pre, the primal sound fields, especially where the ascendant master levels are, that means you're coming into the matrix whether you want to or not. All right? If you lose a certain percentage as an ascended master, if you lose a certain percentage of your consciousness because it's embodied in things that fall, they will pull you in. And the Metatron Giovanni Collective realized it was going to go in. It could have maintained itself at a D12 level and began its evolution from there. It would have had a big chore in its hands. It would have had to sever, first of all, its connection to its parts that were in the Wiesedek matrix. And then it would have had to progressively accrete frequency until it could host out. It would have to host out and it would become kind of like a baby ascended master collective again instead of a very old time collective. The collective made a decision and it was the collective, the Metatron collective of the Giovanni collective. They made a decision that they would do their fall in a certain way. They started to have, you can almost look like it, look at it as a virus. The parts of themselves that had fallen were still in communication electronically with the collective. Now the ones that were in the matrix didn't know it, but every little thought that the fallen ones felt the, its Ascendant Master Collective felt. And it began to take on the same attitudes. And one of the biggest and worst attitudes, and it's still a virus in this time matrix, is the attitude of blame. The Metatron entity, the Giovanni Metatron entity, decided to blame the other Ascendant Master Collectives for its fall. It was reminded that it agreed to do this. It was the one that was gung-ho, going to save the matrix, you know, going to pull all itself out and all that. But it had, so, it had enough of the influence of its fallen ones, there were 89% of its consciousness at this point, saying, 
it's somebody else's fault. It's your fault, so we were going to pay. That collective made a decision that it would use its knowledge of primal creation physics and that it would take over the matrix, this matrix. That was originally what its fallen parts had wanted and what it had tried to stop its fallen, fallen parts from doing. And there was a little problem when this decision was made because there was the Eye of Yahweh, the Metatron Eye, that was completely under the governance of the Metatronic entity of Giovanni. The Giovanni entity, through the collective of Metatron, turned control of that polarization refraction lens over to the Wieshedek collectives. And they were able to use that display. It was already tapped into this, the phantom matrix and this time matrix. They were able to create by feeding energy off this time matrix and off phantom. They would pull energy from our time matrix, from the phantom matrix. They would use phantom matrix to pull it from here into their matrix. As long as they were able to feed off something else that had its life force connection to source, they wouldn't go into implosion. If the matrices were severed, they would go into implosion eventually. They'd get a few billion years of evolution out of it. But eventually, they would be a deteriorating system. They would become extinct in terms of the race identity that they held. They would go back to source as units of consciousness. And that was unacceptable to them. Now, when Metatron, when the Metatron Collective made the decision to turn the Eye of Yahweh over to the Wiesedek Matrix, it had to be reprogrammed. The original program, mathematical scalar program, of the Eye of Metatron was compatible with this time matrix and with the phantom matrix and with source. It had the potentiality of regenerating into Christos. In order to do what they did by allowing the eye, creating the eye of Metatron in a way, putting a program in that would allow it to actually reverse certain things so it could feed instead of just being a conduit that could take some energy, which was supposed to be the collectives getting hosted over, it would be able to open it both ways, send energy in and pull energy out. In other words, send energy in as a carrier wave to drag more energy out than it was supposed to. In order to do this, the programming on the Eye of Metatron had to be changed. It had to be changed from its original base 12, base 15 compatible, and I mean base 12, base 15, the D12 Christos pattern, but built on those 15 spheres that we talked about yesterday in you know the, the basic structure where you have a set of seven and then another set of seven and then that takes place within one. All right, so you have 15 spheres. The mathematics were altered in the Eye of Metatron lens to a base seven, where it was like taking the uh, yolk out of an egg. So they would build their system, they would restructure their black hole system on the seven pattern, which was literally cutting it off from the primal light and sound fields, but allowing it to plug into other systems on their lower heavens level that were built on the seven, because you have the seven, he the seven higher and lower heavens. So they took the lower heavens pattern, used it to reprogram and organize their black hole, and that allowed them to be able to tap into other lower heaven systems, other Veka systems. This created a distortion in the consciousness that was part of the Wiesedek matrix. The Wiesedek matrix people were doing bad enough as it was before they had Metatron get involved. They had certain successes as far as Aramatsus was concerned. Aramatsus was a planet that was, or a planetary system that was evolving close to where it could be brought back to its Christos imprint. But once the Eye of Metatron was used and run through the Aramatsus stargates, it completely changed that. It completely redid the mathematical structure of their stargates so they couldn't plug in to a system, to a, to a Christo system. So it not only posed a threat to our time matrix, but it totally, all the, all the progress that had been made in healing the Wiesedek system had been totally unplugged and undone. And the thing with the, the Metatronic system is it's permanent. Some things in physics can be undone. Some things 
reach critical mass. And if they reach a critical mass of distortion where there's less than 30% of their natural Christos template left, they become something else and they're no longer compatible with their own template. That's what happened with the Wiesedek matrix. The consciousness that was residing in that matrix and the planetary systems and the stargates in that matrix can't be plugged in again because of the choices that were made. And the main choice was made by the Metatron Giovanni entity, but it was made on behalf of many other collectives of the fallen ones that had petitioned to do, you know, petitioned for them to do this. You know, please, you, you have control of the lens. You know, give us life, give us eternal life. You know that we're, you know, we'll implode. You know, all they had to do was agree to biogenesis and agree to play fair. If they had entered the Emerald Covenant, they would have been able to evolve out. But it was known, and their scientists, their high mind scientists knew that if they created this artificial mathematical structure, there was a way of bending light and sound that was based on the Vesica Pisces, two interwoven spheres. Now, the natural time matrix is based on a triveca, not a biveca. First, there's the triveca, and the biveca is part of that. You would go single biveca, triveca. That's a natural structure. What they did was simply use the eye of Metatron as their zero point or their one point and build a, tri a, a double from there, a biveca from there. They created artificial light through this particular synthesis of mathematics. They created totally polarized light through this process because at least with the triveca you have the two polarized points that are unified through the third. In their universe, everything is bipolar. It's like um, having a real bad chemical day, <laughs> bipolar disorder. It's a whole universal system that's structured on bipolar disorder, which implies they have extremes of dramas. They have extreme highs and extreme lows, and they're constantly in that cycle. Now, the races that were in the Wiesedek matrix at that time, they chose this. They wanted this, most of them, at least the creator gods, what they call themselves creator gods in that matrix, wanted it because it would promise them one thing. As long as that Eye of Metatron was their vampire energy-sucking device, they would have eternal life. They would be immortal. They would have the closest thing they could get to ascension without having to cooperate. They could have got regular ascension if they just, you know, decided to be nice and didn't want to play masters of the universe. The Metatronic bodies that were created through the programming are very interesting structures. They take part of what would be a normal living biological structure and they take out certain parts, the mathematics that are missing or pieces of the template that are missing, and they plug in certain parts of the template together that weren't originally meant to be plugged in together. It completely destroys the entire template when it's fully done. There's not 30% left where you can do bioregenesis to plug it back into its natural divine blueprint. It creates an atrocity. It creates something other than what was originally created in the Christos vein, and it creates something that is not compatible with the mathematics or the scalar frequencies of the Christos divine blueprint for this matrix or any other one. So in making a choice to be immortal, they made a choice to be finite because their immortality is dependent on sucking energy from living things, living matrices. That's why they will go out of their way, and that's why at this point, we'll get into the drama more tomorrow, because I want to get into the history, so I want by tomorrow when we start to talk about what this means to us and why we need to know it today, I want you to understand you know, the history of where this comes from. But there were races of consciousness created, both of draconian, because some of the draconian races that were in Phantom decided they wanted to play. That sounds good. Yeah, we can be immortal. Yeah, we can be immortal without having to cooperate with them. <laughs> yeah, and then we can fight with you. <laughs> there were a whole bunch of hybrid races created from the races of the Fallen Matrix. These began about, 100 and f about 150 billion years ago. They started this connection with the, with the Wiesedek Matrix. By 570 million years ago, it had become an absolute outrage because 570 million years ago, the races and collectives that had agreed to go into the Metatronic 
pattern. And Metatron wasn't being prejudiced at that point. The more we can get, the better. So they would let any of them. If the Odetacron wanted to come out of Phantom, they'd take them over there. If the Omicron wanted, they'd take them over there. What they didn't tell them is when they got on the other side, they'd become assimilated, which means their consciousness would be repatterned. They call it thought adjusting. There are some programs out there right now that teach you how to meet your thought adjuster. <laughs> I'll talk about those tomorrow. But they would literally assimilate the consciousness of the being that came over into the electrostatic bodies that they had created themselves through the metatronic imprint. They, were, they ate them, energetically speaking. It wasn't eating with big teeth and ripping flesh. It was transmuting the flesh through a certain type of Merkaba. And once the consciousness was in Merkaba, bringing it over and assimilating it through the reversed Merkaba fields that they had created through the uh, metatronic, the metatronic reversals. The metatronic program that allowed for this artificially sustained dead living system were reversals of portions, where you took portions of the natural divine blueprint and pulled pieces out, pulled frequencies out. What was a base 12 was reduced to a base 8 which meant there are eight subfrequency bands in every dimension instead of 12, and there were only 11 dimensions instead of 12. This structure, they were, through this structure, this program, this, and then they take that structure and then they reverse the mathematical programming on it. That was the last step I wanted to explain there. So they take pieces out, make it a base eight, and reverse it. And then it would repel itself from the natural matrices, but it had the metatronic eye where it could siphon energy off other systems. The body forms created through this structure are pretty awesome. They're like astral bodies, like what we might consider our astral body or our ghost body. They would have the image of the being that originally went in to the Wishadek matrix and adopted the Metatronic program. So let's say if you decide you wanted to go, you would be able to maintain yourself, but you'd be kind of like ghost-like. It would be an electrostatic body, a body that didn't evolve or grow or change. It always stayed that way, as long as you fed it. And what you would feed it by would be the frequencies of other living things. Now, 570 million years ago, after many races were created within the Wiesedek matrix on the Metatronic program, they decided it was time to come and get what they wanted, which was the rest of us, which was the phantom matrix first. Because there was an interesting thing, the phantom matrix axis. If you look at our universal stargates as one cathara grid, the phantom matrix axis came in at a 22.5 degree angle, but was running reverse, but it was a 22.5 degree shift from our vertical axis. The Wiesedek matrix was on the other side, 22.5 degree shift. We were right in the middle. So they found a way to barrel through to use wormhole technology, which is poking holes in the natural template to connect things that aren't supposed to be connected. That's like connecting the artery that runs through your neck to the one that runs through your heart to create a bypass that doesn't belong there. And eventually it collapses because it doesn't work really well because it's not natural. They created something called the... Um, Arimathea wormhole. They used Aramat Aramat Zeus, which was their D11.5 star system planet that had almost made it into, you know, return to Christic template, but fell. They created a wormhole between that through the moon of our, not our moon, but the moon of our D11 gate. Now our D11 gate was Avion. Its moon was called Avalon. They created the wormhole through Avalon and into Phantom, so it made an arc of open frequency. That began the building of something called the cube matrix. The cube matrix is the wonderful creation, the quite brilliant creation of divine science used with an anti-Christos intention. It is a, let's say, created life field 
You could compare it to artificial intelligence, really. It's created without a soul because it's disconnected from what you would consider soul. It's disconnected from its connection to source, but it is able to sustain by science. The Metatronic lens is science. This is high science used for perversion. It wasn't originally. The Metatron originally was a good guy. But that changed, and when that changed, a whole new type of creation was brought into being that was never seen. It was literally a beginning point, which is hard to do when time is simultaneous. <laughs> you know, wait a minute, what begins first? So obviously somewhere, the potentiality for it existed all along in the creations that Source created when it created the Matrix itself. The mechanics that were set in motion with the original creation will come in and reset the balance, where the fields begin to separate. The living field it's, it's feeding off of will begin to pull away. The divine blueprint there will reset itself. And these are very long cosmic cycles when this resetting occurs. But there will always be a cosmic cycle of resetting of the divine blueprint. And that ensures that anything that became disharmonic, any black hole systems that were made, will be severed from the original matrix. That gets healed, and the other one has X amount of energy left, however much it managed to siphon, and it will have evolution until it expends its energy. And then it will implode upon itself, and it will become part of the particles, the particae, particae, and particum, that make up the dimensional fields. And what will happen then, once it's purged, it's like a purification where it clears its own distortions by blowing itself apart. Those units of consciousness return to innocence will then reassimilate into the original matrix from which they fell. But there will be no memory of the fall or of what they were. We're at a position right now where a cosmic cycle is coming to an uh, ending and a beginning. The Metatronic bodies are frightening things in a way because the races that agree to participate in order to have short-term immortality in exchange for eternal life, they sentenced themselves to that destiny, the path of Arimathea that was originally intended as a path of evolution, um, a faster path of evolution back into Christ Christdom, became the path of de-evolution. It became the path of the Metatronic imprint, which has no alternative but to return to source through implosion. Now, there are vast races there at this point because the evolution has gone for so long. There are many, many races, many races that originally started out as a handful of races of Draconian, Wiesedek, now, we Sedeks were the ones that are, who originally weren't even part of this matrix. They had fallen from another collective and created that black hole system, you know, that ours got hooked into. And the Anuelahim. All of these races, there was just a small amount of them from the higher density fields, the higher dimensional fields, like D11, D10. They, once they had made the Metatronic promise and they had allowed their templates to be recoded, they created spawn they created more of themselves. They, just like the Creator Gods, just like Source, created the Ascended Masters, and the Ascended Masters created the Rishi, and the Rishi created the Avatars and the Christos Founders races, and they created us down here. They decided, well, now we've got our own universe. We're masters of the universe now. Now we're God over here. And they began to create and populate their matrix with more and more races, more and more races that had to feed off other living races in order to sustain their matrix. So at this point, there are many, many races there. And there's, there's a reason in here why there's a lot of people that... You can look at things that are Christic and anti-Christic, and you can understand them as part of a larger understanding that Source has, or you can go into blame, and you can call one bad, evil, and it should be destroyed. Or you can understand what it's about, and where it fits, and you can perhaps feel for the destiny it chose for itself. So even though you can't allow it to harm you, you can still find love, no matter how horrific the things are that it might have done. The races of Phantom Matrix, once they became combined with the Wiesedek Matrix, became a force of what, on this planet and many others, was known as the Antichrist. 
it is a collective, it's not just a singular. But imagine if you were a being. Now imagine if you were a being that you didn't have a lot of memory of where you came from because they don't give their own memory of where they came from. You were living in planetary systems. What if you found out that your only destiny was implosion unless you tapped into other systems? What if you knew that ascension was no longer even a possibility for you? That the only way you could go home and be healed to go back to where you came from was to do it in total innocence like a child with no knowing whatsoever because you'd go back in pieces. There's a terror in that feeling, the terror of annihilation. That great, my parts might go back, but I'm not going to know it. <laughs> you know? There's a feeling of being finite. And if you look around at the world we're in today, you can see the huge effect that these races have had once they begin to blend with the races here. Because most of our dogmas we talked about earlier, the religious dogmas, even the science dogmas, are all coming from that place. They're all coming from a place where ascension really isn't an option. Survival of the fittest is one of the things that happens when a race realizes it's finite and the only way it can sustain and not implode and not be blown back to space dust is to take energy from something else. It will. Unless it has enough D12, which it wouldn't be in that predicament if it did. If it had D12, it would realize, get it over with. Let me go back to space dust, because then I can get out of here. Then I can get free again. They can be free. It will be a long evolution for them, but they would go back into as the basic consciousness that forms the matrix they originally fell out of, and they would eventually be able to be renewed through new forms that would be created in that matrix. But they are living a reality where they're creator gods, and they have gods. There's a couple of popular ones. One is called Jehovah. Uh, another one is called Ahala. Gives you an idea of some of the gods here. There's another one called Brahma. There's several. And these are like D11. They call them D11 dark avatars. They're avatar collectives. D11, 11.5 at the highest level of them. That 0.5 they get from plugging into the Metatronic eye. Now, the lens of the eye of Metatron was only the beginning of what became a nightmare. It's a nightmare we've all been living. And sometimes there is a, a temporary reprieve in the, the um, reality of ignorance is bliss. <laughs> we've been living that little space since 9,558 B.C. Kind of like a, ah, let's take a breather and pretend we don't know anything. <laughs> since the uh, 570 million years ago, since the Arimathea wormhole was created, a whole series of them were created to link through our gates into phantom, to link the three together. There are also massive galactic wars intergalactic wars that were fought over this. There was a group of the original fallen ones in the Phantom Matrix that didn't want to go into the Wesodite Matrix. They didn't want to go into the Emerald Covenant either. So they were going to fight the Wesodex. And they had members of their own that joined the Wesodex. So it was splitting up of the races. There, were, there was a period of time called the, um, the Gaian Orion Wars. And they took place 570 million years ago, right after the Arimathea wormhole was created, when there are massive wars fought in the Gaia system, which from here is Polaris, which is Earth's density three counterpart, and in the Orion system, where we have Stargate 8 um, in Mintaka Orion. There's also something called Alnatak and Alnalam Orion. And all of those systems, with their various inhabited races in Phantom Matrix and in here and in Wiesedek, began to fight. The guys here didn't fight. They were trying to defend because what was happening were the Wiesedex were coming through and they were seizing control of various of the Stargates and Phantom. 
they attached metatronic lenses to Stargate, um, Stargate 8 in, in Phantom Matrix, and that was Alan Attack. They attached it to Stargate 10 in Vega. They connected one of their planets to um, the part of Vega that had entered Phantom Matrix. They worked themselves down from 11. They had at 11.5, they had uh, their Aramat planet. They connected that to the moon in D11, uh, the Avalon moon in Phantom. They connected next, that was D11, 11.5, and they connected the 10 systems, and they put a metatronic, they called them seed atoms. They put metatronic seed atoms, which were a series of lenses, into uh, D10, Phantom, Vega. Now the Phantom, create, the, the Phantom templates were created a lot of them during the original fall when Stargate 12 had been imploded through blocking Stargate 11. It had sent portions, a portion, into the phantom imprint, which was, means reversal. It went into a reversed mathematical pattern, and they were all sustained by the Eye of Brahman that was put in. So planetary system, dimensional system by dimensional system, the Wiesedex managed to create wormhole links through using this particular mathematics and crystal technology that were referred to as the metatronic seed atoms, putting them in the stargates between Phantom and here. They linked through the halls of Amente before the halls of Amente were there. In fact, the halls of Amente were created later because of this. There were the natural stargates in our system. They begin to seed them with the metatronic atoms, which meant there is a, a bridge, that arc. They have their own arc of the covenant, and it's not a holy covenant either. They created arcs of frequency that would run from Wiesedek Matrix through our stargates into Phantom. And eventually, eventually, what their, their ultimate goal was, was to do it all the way down from D11 all the way down to D1, link all the systems together, and then use the power to pull both of them into their matrix. So you could pull this time matrix down, literally break it off from its D12 connection at 11.5, at the metatronic eye, and reverse its whole mathematical coding, and reverse phantom, and pull everything in them into the metatronic imprint. That would be permanent if that were to happen. So of course the founders knew from the beginning that that was not going to be allowed to happen. There would be the sweep of the great cosmic cycle that would come through and open all of the highest gates and reset the D12 Divine Blueprint. What that would do would create a polarization wave that would separate anything that didn't belong in this Divine Blueprint originally and didn't have 30% of its original Divine Blueprint left because it had the Meta Metatronic override would be taken in to the Metatronic system. It wasn't a choice the Founders made to cause harm to the ones in the Metatronic system. The Metatronic races blame the Founders for this. They take no responsibility for the fact that they're the ones that created this darn blasphemy of science themselves. They sealed their own destiny when they created the Metatronic distortion. And at this point, they are simply trying to feed on whatever's available. They've done an amazing thing the, the uh, when I show you the, this one graph, it'll give you an idea of just the the brilliance. I mean, the intelligence level. You can be really intelligent and really stupid at the same time. <laughs> but the sophistication of intelligence or intellect that these beings have to be able to take science. They're not just moving bodies around. They're moving galaxies around. They're moving suns. They're connecting suns to suns to suns through stargates. When you think about the level of intelligence that it takes to do that, and the level of knowledge it takes to do that, and then you think about us here, <laughs> right now, <laughs> it's almost laughable <laughs> on the cosmic game, but <laughs> there's an innocence about us, our race. <laughs> That's what's going to get us through. <laughs> but this is where it can almost get scary if we didn't know better. Now, if we know our direct connection. We know we have our D12 frequency available now, and if we amplify that in our fields, we get those Merkabas built. We're going to be okay. We don't have to be afraid. But boy, is this one of those underdog games. 
You know, you see those dramas with the underdog, the little guy, <laughs> the David and Goliath. <laughs> well, right now, we're dealing with self-appointed creator gods from a fallen matrix that have painstakingly, over a very long period of the illusion of linear time, created a technology. We'll get more fully into the technology tomorrow. It's known as the beast.